by the Lagos Judicial Panel in southwest Nigeria in its report says the manner of the unprovoked and unjustifiable killing of an armed and peaceful hashtag NSAS protesters at the Lekki Toll Gate on October 20th, 2020 was a massacre. This damning verdict was published after the panel's more than a year investigation into the allegations of the abuses and human rights violation of a defunct special anti-robbery squad, SARS, which was extended to cover the events of the night of October 20th. Now, during the Lekki massacre's first anniversary, Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, had described the massacre as phantom and the first massacre in the world without blood or bodies. However, the report submitted to the Lagos government by the panel shows that there were blood and bodies of massacred protesters, revealing that the Nigerian soldiers stole the corpses and wiped clean the crime scene to hinder further investigations by the panel. This investigation also found that the soldiers' unprovoked violence against the protesters was worsened by soldiers' refusal to allow ambulances to provide medical treatment to victims who needed it. The panel matter-of-factly said the army grossly violated its own rules of engagement. Now, joining me on the news to discuss this latest development is the executive director of Enough is Enough, that's the EIE, Yemi Adamoleko. Hello, Yemi. Thank you for joining me. Good afternoon. All right, Yemi. Um, now, the Lagos Judicial Panel, we've seen that it's, it's been more than a year. And now the Lagos Judicial Panel, in its submitted reports, claims that the manner of killing of unarmed and the peaceful hashtag enter SARS protesters at the Lekki toll gate on the 20th, 20th of October 2020 was actually a massacre. What's your thoughts on this? I think it's very it's very important and the panel should certainly be commended for make presenting on the evidence before them and that really if you go to court that's as the judges will tell you i can only decide on what is before me and i think that's what the panel has done and, and they've done it well i think the opening part of the that section actually defines what a massacre is that was a huge debate online post October 20, October 20, 2020, where people were saying, oh, even if one person or two, that it's not a massacre because a thousand people were not killed. Because people had in their minds that until you have like large numbers of people killed, can you define it as a massacre? But the Lagos State panel clearly defined that was not the case. And actually, I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure if you've, if you've read it, but actually defined that very clearly that that's not uh, the de definition of what it, what a massacre is. So I think that was really significant. And as you also said in your intro, the Minister of Information has consistently said this was a bloodless and bodiless supposed massacre, using that, including asking news platforms to apologize for their reports. So I think this, in a sense, by an, it's, CNN has done its investigation, BBC did a report, Foundation for Investigative Journalism did a report, Premium Time did a report. But none of that was sufficient, so to speak, until now that a government set up agency has now said, OK, for everyone who doubted, soldiers were there, police were there, and innocent citizens were killed. Right. Now, talking about um, the reports, with the latest reports, the latest report submitted by the Lagos State Government's constituted panel on the alleged NSAS massacre confirmed that some people died and some were also injured. So what do you make of this report? Well, I mean, that's the report I found what citizens have been talking about since last year. And that's exactly what I just said. Uh, CNN had its own report as a media platform. BBC did the same thing. Two investigative platforms also corroborated that. Amnesty International are put as a fit. So you have three, five independent bodies who at different times did come out to say that, yes, the soldiers were there, the police were there, and people were killed. So all the Lagos panel has done is that based on the same evidence that all those platforms that I've analyzed, they've come to the same conclusion. But this is weightier because despite the other five bodies that I referenced, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, and the federal government of Nigeria had consistently said nothing of the sort happened at Lekki Gate. I will defer, um, unless I'm mistaken, that Governor Songwo Ilu has said that he's not aware but that he would wait till the findings of the report. So unless I missed it, I've never heard him deny that anything happened at the toll gate. He did say that, I think I saw a report where he did acknowledge that people died, that he knew about, but not from gunshot woods was what he said. But 
he again i stand to be corrected as i've never heard him come out to say that nobody died it's a falsehood it was bloodless bloodless no but the federal government has consistently insisted on that and i think now that a panel set up by legal states has said to the contrary it will be i mean it's now 12 o'clock almost 24 hours after the report i haven't seen or heard any statement from the federal government of nigeria and it'll be interesting to see how they respond. But just wanted to make sure I, I share this definition for those who might still be confused. A massacre, as, divide, as defined by the Webster Dictionary, says the act or instance of killing a number of usually helpless or unresisting human beings under circumstances of atrocity or cruelty. They were seated waving flags, so they were certainly not resisting any arrest. They were certainly helpless. So at this point, it's really not a debate of if it was a thousand or nine. I think the, the screenshots that you're showing listed, I believe, nine, um, including those who are missing and presumed dead. So I think it is extremely significant that the Lagos state panel set up by the government has confirmed what citizens have been talking about for, for uh, what's it called, for a year. All right. So now that everything is clear and out in the air, how do you think this report will benefit the relatives of those who actually lost their lives? So this is a first step in what I would say is a long journey. The second step, which we haven't seen, and again, for to remind those who might not be, might have forgotten, one of the core demands last year was that there are police officers who have been indicted in various probes and panels that were found to have committed human rights violations. As a show of good faith, where you're showing to the citizens that you do understand, obviously not everybody in the police force is that. Not everybody in the police force is going around killing innocent citizens or extorting money from citizens. But to show that you understand that there are people within the police force that do these things, why don't you actually prosecute those who have been found and show that you mean business about police reform? But that was never done. And one year later, in addition to no one, as far as I mean, you and the media, please correct me if I'm wrong, no one in the police force has been brought to justice. Secondly, even people that were caught during the protest that had pictures, there was one particular gentleman, I remember his picture, it was a man carrying a cutlass with a really fierce look on his face. His name was shared on social media, his address but he was never been arrested. So the government makes a big song and dance over the fact that NSAS protesters, quote unquote, were criminals. But we're clear that, and again, the report validates that, that the protests were for the most part peaceful and orderly. So the people who have gone after looting stores, causing havoc, raping and robbing, one of them, thank you for showing this footage of, this is really the police against citizens who are harmless, not armed, not not causing any violence, but the police water cannon shooting, and nobody from the police force, at least that I'm aware of, nor any of the criminals that there were caught who were involved in any of the criminal activity. Let's be clear, protesting is not a criminal activity, right. or any of the criminal activity of looting have ever been brought forward. So the first step with the report is sort of a vindication that a government agency has accepted that another government agency, i.e. the army and the police, committed human rights violations, step one. Step two would be then to say, having established that that happened, the people who were then culpable, from the guy who shot to the person who gave the order, then should then be brought forward or prosecuted for, again, murder, violation of human rights, whatever the charges might be. Thirdly, there needs to be a reform of our police. And again, if we remember clearly, part of the five for five demands was a recognition that police officers, just like Nigerians, are also living, going through very difficult situations. All of us are traumatized from various angles, but recognizing that they are also working under very difficult situations, two of the five for five demands actually have to do with the police officers. One is improving their welfare, improving their welfare. And the right. second one is ensuring that they get the psychological evaluation that they need to ensure that they can actually do their jobs. Okay. Because yeah, after yeah. a while, when you deal with murder and all sorts of things that they have to deal with in the course of their daily jobs, sometimes they're not emotionally, nor mentally, nor psychologically in the right frame of mind right. 
sorry, to protect sorry, lives sorry, and property. Sorry, I would have but to that also needs to be done. Thing. And so we need to be serious about reforming our police. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Yami. Uh, finally, do you agree to the school of thought that this report was deliberately leaked to the public? And for what purpose exactly? Well, I'm not sure about deliberately leaked, but I'm, I'm, I'm certain that, I mean, again, Governor Somulu did make the statement, I think about a month ago, that the report will, uh, during the course of the one year memorial, that the report will be made public. He said will be made public. Now, as far as I know, the six states that have submitted reports formally, only three have made theirs public, Ekiti, Bayelsa, and a third state that I don't remember. About 18 states have completed seatings, but their reports are not public. So again, this is not just Lagos. 29 states had panels. 18 states have submitted reports that are not, have completed seatings, but not submitted reports. So that's also a conversation to be had because police reform is not just about Lagos, it's a national conversation. But I'm not sure about, I don't know who leaked the document because the one copy that I saw was not signed. So it wasn't the copy that was presented to Mr. Governor that was leaked. So maybe in the preparing process, printer, whoever, I'm not quite sure who leaked it. But be that as it may, it has been leaked. And the point of it is we now know the content of it. And we can then hold the Lagos State government, account, um, yeah, we can hold them accountable to ensure that the findings plus the re recommendations are implemented. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, Yami. Thank you.